everyone! Today I'll teach you how to create this amazing painting using a simple sheet of paper, a Pasca marker, black and white paint, a canvas and an affordable projector. You don't need to be an experienced artist to achieve this impressive and expressive result. I'll guide you step by step and share some super easy and straightforward techniques to make your artwork stand out. So if you are ready to explore and get inspired to start creating something unique, let's get started. The background I want to demonstrate now is a super simple one, incredibly easy to create. In fact, it's so straightforward that anyone can do it, including kids. To begin with, I use masking tape to create a shape that covers the area I don't want to paint at this moment. I'm painting this picture using only black and white colors to keep it as simple as possible. So in the lower part I create a shape, in the upper part I paint a solid color which I later use for adding text. This is what you see behind Audrey. What I'm doing now is creating a line with my tape, essentially shaping it and I'm figuring out the form as I go along. It's not predetermined. I cut my masking tape with the scissors to achieve sharper edges. It's critical that the angles match up in the corners so we get a nice straight edge. This technique is fantastic to use if you need a little inspiration to get started on the canvas or if you prefer a more minimalistic and straightforward style instead of something too flashy and colorful. I believe that most people actually enjoy my colorful style, which is probably why they follow me. However, it's always good to have an alternative for those who prefer a more straightforward style. The next step is to create my shape, and I do that by cutting out a 10 by 10 cm piece of sturdy paper which I can then use as a template to trace. What I'm doing now is I'm placing my template slightly over the edge and then I start drawing. I tilt it a bit to one side and to the other side along the way so that it looks slightly off center. It should resemble small post-it notes on a bulletin board. This will add a little movement and life in the background so it doesn't look too static and boring. It's important to draw the line under the painter's tape as well so that when we remove the tape later, we know where to paint. If you find it difficult to draw a straight edge, you can come back later and use a ruler after removing the tape. Since I plan for my squares to be painted in grey tones, I'm using a grey Posca pen. If I wanted to paint them in black, I would have used a black pen. Just as if I wanted to use a green color, I would have used a green Posca pen. Now I'm just continuing drawing with my template here, and there should be squares all over this area. I align it with the tape and fill out the area and it's okay if there's a half square at the top. I always remember to tilt them slightly, but they are relatively opposite each other. The shape I'm using here does not have to be square. It could also be a circle, a flower, a triangle, or any kind of figure. Just remember that the more complicated your shape is, the more time you need to paint around it afterwards. If you're going to use this technique with others, it's important to always be aware of the motor skills of the people you're painting with. When working with small children, it's a good idea to create a simple shape. When working with adults, you can let them decide how they want their shape to look. The possibilities are many, but remember to consider that it should fit the abilities of the people you are painting with, if you're using this technique working with people. If not, choose any shape you like yourself. Now it looks like this, and I've finished drawing my squares. So now they need to be painted grey. On the other side of the line I need to paint black, but I leave that for now while I paint the grey colors. Since I don't have any grey paint, I have to mix one myself. I do that with titanium white and black. Here I'm using black ink, but you can simply use acrylic paint. You can add a bit of water to make it glide better. This makes it a bit easier when you need to paint within the lines. Make sure to mix enough paint from the start, so you don't run out halfway. Of course I ran out of paint here in this painting, so I had to keep toning it with white to make it lighter and lighter. It's not a big deal, but if you want it to be uniformly colored all the way down, it's a good idea to mix enough paint from the beginning. Lesson learned, Mille. Now I just start painting my squares. I'm using a brush with a straight edge, as it helps to half the work for me. I simply place the straight edge against my line, and I paint from there. If you're painting on cheap canvases, they can tend to have a very rough surface. Therefore, it can be a good idea to mix a little water with the paint to make it glide better. This way the paint easily settles into the texture of your canvas. Normally I only paint on quality canvases that are well primed from the start and therefore smoother to paint on. The cheap cotton canvases tend to have a very rough surface and are a bit more coarse grained since they haven't received as much primer. 
be mindful when mixing water into the paint that you don't add so much water that the paint loses its opacity. Adding a bit of water can help stretch your paint a little bit further. Since I'm painting on a white background, there's no issue with opacity, even though I thin it with a little water. So don't worry about that. So it would be nice if we could get away with painting just once. Painting within the lines might not be the most exciting task, so it would be nice if we could get away with painting just once. Now I'm going to speed up the process a bit here, since it's not rocket science, to paint these squares, and it can be a bit dull to watch. But stay with me, because in a moment I'll run out of paint and I have to mix a new grey color. Here I've run out of paint, so I need to mix more. I have a little tip for that. I simply just add more white paint to my grey mixture, so that I can paint the next two rows in a slightly lighter grey, and maybe the last row with an even lighter shade. If you're not the type who wants to spend too much time painting within the lines, you could have created a stencil to work with. The challenge with that, of course, is that it can be difficult to see through the paper to know where to place the next square. Doing it the way I've shown you here gives you the full control over how you want it to look. Now I've finished my squares. They could have been neater, as you can see. They could have benefited from two coats of paint, but since the color is mixed, I can't match the exact shade again, and I'm sure you now understand the idea behind it. So. Now I'm going to remove the tape, and as you can see, I have a nice straight line. I can see that there's a little triangle I forgot to paint, but I can fix that when I paint my black top. Now I'm going to start painting my black top here. So I need to put some tape on. I'm placing the tape over the grey areas I just painted, so that I can create a crisp black border. I laid the tape over the paint, so I need to grab a new roll. That's just like me. I always get super messy when I paint, but it's like with the kids. The dirtier they get, the more fun they've had, right? I'm creating sharp corners with my scissors, so that I can have a perfectly crisp edge. And I'm placing the tape far enough in to cover the corner I missed when painting in grey. It's no big deal, I can fix that with the black paint. I could have chosen to paint a little triangle in the hand as well, but since I'm lazy, I'm going for the easy solution. And I also ran out of the grey color I started painting with, so it's not really an option. Now I'm going to use a small paint roller to paint. If you need to cover a large area, and you want it to be smooth and even, it's always a good idea to use a roller. But, as you can see here, the canvas is simply too soft, and it gives way when I apply pressure to the roller. So I have to give up, and instead paint it black with a brush. Normally when using painter's tape, you would apply the base color over the tape before painting your new color, just like a professional painter does. But here, I'm quickly painting my black color, so I can remove the tape, which has already started to bubble up. Now I'm carefully removing the tape, pulling it towards the black area to avoid getting paint on the gray sections. I'm just painting the last part steadily, ensuring it gets a nice even layer of black paint all over. So, I have my black top here, and at first glance, it may seem like a sharp contrast between the black and the grey. Since the top becomes quite heavily, and the bottom remains light, one could have chosen to paint the opposite, with the dark at the bottom and the light at the top. However, since my subject is black, it would have resulted in too much black on black. That's why I decided to place the black at the top. But, in reality, it could have been any color. I'm not too worried about it being too dark, since I'll be outlining it with a white Posca pen afterwards, and adding some text highlight with white as well. Now it's time to project my Audrey Hepburn image. So, I need to decide whether she should face one way or the other. Here I'm using an old school overhead projector, so I simply flip my transparency with the printed image. With a digital projector, you can easily mirror your image and experiment to see which way looks best. I think she looks better facing this way, so that's how I want to paint her. I want to paint white underneath her to make her stand out. Yes, it's black and black in her hair, but having white underneath helps her separate from the background, making her more visible. That's why I'm only drawing an outline now, so that I have something to paint around later. Even though I'm sketching with a black Posca pen, I can still see where my line goes when I paint white, as the two black colors are different. But I could have used the white Posca pen here as well. Once I've outlined the entire outer edge, I need to paint it white, and it actually takes three coats of paint to get good coverage. Take your time to do it properly, as this will give you the nicest result. Now that I've painted three layers, and it's completely covered, I start drawing her. I use my black Posca pen for the outline, as you can see here, and I'm as careful as I can be. But 
If you make small mistakes along the way, don't beat yourself up over it. The people looking at your painting won't know that that line should have been slightly to the left or the right. Just carry on. Around the eyes, the mouth and the nose though, it's essential to be extremely careful because these features express her personality. You should take extra care to be precise when outlining the facial features. I will give you a card here to a video where I teach you how to paint personal portraits and how to edit your images. When you edit your pictures, it's essential to have images with a good resolution. If your image has a low resolution, pixels will appear, meaning small squares that you have to draw around. Therefore, it's a good idea to make sure you have some original high resolution images instead of, for example, grabbing images from Facebook. Facebook compresses the images you download from there. It's crucial when you are outlining portraits to stay faithful to what you see. If you start drawing details that you imagine, you could end up with a result that doesn't resemble the person you want to paint. We must admit that the computer is smarter than us in this regard. It's a good idea to place small crosses where you need to paint the black color, so that when you're sitting at your table and painting, you can see what needs to be painted and what doesn't. When you're working up close, it can be quite a challenge to distinguish between different areas. Now I'm going to start painting my subject here. In this case, I'm using ink, but I wouldn't recommend using ink as it tends to fade over time. Instead, use a high quality black acrylic paint. I've switched to using golden fluid or golden flat, the black paint is completely opaque and highly pigmented. Golden colors are made from natural pigments, meaning they won't fade over time. They contain up to 80% natural pigments, while student paint contains up to 25% synthetic pigments. It makes a world of difference. Even though golden paint might be slightly more expensive, it goes four times as far as regular paint, so it's not expensive in the long run. Now I'm going to outline and separate her from the background using a white Posca pen. Where there's a dark background, I use white lines, and where there's a white background, I use black lines. This way, we make her stand out from the background. Now I'm going to add this text to the background of my painting. It's a quote from Audrey Hepburn, and that's why I thought it would be fun to use it in a painting. I simply repeated the text three times. Elegance is the only beauty that never fades. I enjoy using quotes in my paintings, especially when I'm painting famous personalities. If this were a personal piece with a picture of my daughter, for example, I might consider adding a text with something funny or something sweet that she had said at some point in her life, or other details that could describe who she is as a person. Another interesting aspect when creating background effects in this way is that the viewer looking at the artwork might need to think for a moment about what it's actually saying. But at the same time, you should also be able to create this context that makes the artwork understandable. I'm now going to draw my text and it's not that difficult. I take my white Posca pen and basically I just draw the outline. As you can see, I'm drawing up to her face and no further, so the text appears behind her. You can also choose to highlight a few words with a different color. For example, let's say that the text is a bit smaller, then you could write elegance, beauty, fades, and pink or another bold contrasting color that would stand out from this black and white background. It's all about the creative freedom and it's up to you how you want your painting to look. I hope I've inspired you and that you are eager to start creating your own super cool art. If you don't already have a projector, I would strongly recommend getting one as soon as possible because it offers you so many opportunities to create art that you can easily sell. Now I'm just finishing up my drawing and my painting is actually complete. What do you think of it? Would you consider painting something similar or would you choose a different subject? Let me know in the comments who you would paint if you were to create a similar painting. I'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye!